Let's make a version of the uh, window zipper pocket and let's have mesh in it rather than having the see-through plastic. So we're going to put our placement lines for our zipper first. Now our zip puller is on the left-hand side of the hoop. Let's tape this into place securely. I just try and put one in the middle and two in the ends and then tape the zip puller to the edge of the hoop just to get it out of the way. Make sure that we keep our zip within the the railroad road tracks that we have stitched down as our placement line. One side, then the other side. Right, that's nice and even. Let's just take off our excess pieces of washi tape. Try and do this as I go because I invariably end up stitching them in place with something else which annoys me. Now I'm not using a, a tear away or a wash away, I'm just using a cut away. So I'm just going to cut the window out behind the these last two zip stitching lines. Just cut that window out so as the zip is free to open and turn through and it's double turn when we finish the pocket. Now not everyone likes doing this. They like you prefer to use a tear away, that's absolutely fine, or a wash away, that's absolutely fine. I like using the the cutaway, especially when there's no quilting on the project, like this one. So we're going to add our piece of fabric above our zip first. So this is laid on, then it's a flip and fold up. But let's put the lining side on as well. So we're going to turn the hoop over and then see where that's supposed to sit and then place that a quarter of an inch past our outside stitching line or our zip stitching line. Just tape it on the outside edges and then pop the hoop back in and re-stitch that seam. So that's going through all layers and then we're going to actually just Flip and fold those two sections up, catch them with some washi tape at the top, and then we can do our stitch down of our outline to our perimeter, um, which will catch both the lining and the outside fabric. So flip and fold up. Turn the hoop up, across, and down, and that keeps all those layers of fabric together. So let's add on the piece of fabric which is down below past our zip. I'm just holding this in place. It needs to go about a quarter of an inch past our zip tape. And then that just gets folded down that piece, but we want to do the same thing to the back and put our piece of lining on so as it lines out the zip. Again, quarter of an inch past our zip tape. Add a little bit of washi tape at either end. And re-stitch this. We want to then turn over and pull this down. Just put a piece of washi tape at the bottom of it and then just to hold it into place. And then we're going to stitch this together, both pieces facing the bottom of the hoop. So as we're going to stitch the outline perimeter of this uh, zipper pocket. Right, so this piece is, is been lined. Now we're just going to do the outline for our window for our mesh to go over. So different from the notes, we're going to do the outline, take our hoop over to a cutting area, and then trim on the inside of the perimeter stitching of our window. Get it started with a sharp point, and then I'm going to get my trimming scissors. I feel like I'm going in the wrong direction, so let's turn the hoop around. Try not to stretch the stabilizer in the hoop because you don't want it coming away. You don't want it becoming loose and baggy because your outside 
alignment, our, our final alignment stitching lines won't be in the right place if you actually stretch that stabiliser. So I try and keep it as flat as possible. It's not always possible, especially when we're doing around these tiny little wee corners, which are rounded. And we're trimming out all layers, so we're making a hole in the middle of our hoop. One or two millimetres away from the stitching. Needs to be even. Can't leave any hairs. Try not to cut the stitching. If you do cut the stitching, you've actually cut them too far. And you have, there's a fear that um, you might um, not get your satin stitch to stitch in the right place. But it should be okay. Right. So let's return our hoop back to the machine and lay our piece of mesh on. By all means, pin it into place or use washi tape to put it into place. I'm just holding it. Now, mesh is usually a little bit stretchy, so don't let it bag. So it's probably is easier to actually use washi tape. Trim back to our stitching line. And that will give us a little margin of overlap, which is what is going to be inside our satin stitch. Make sure you get all the little bits and pieces from the mesh off. You don't want any lumps hanging out. And now let's do our stitch down, which will be our, there's a little, I've got a little lump there, I can see one piece. You want to do our stitch down for our zigzag there with, um, around the edge of our window, but replace your bobbin with a matching thread. So the pocket's nice on the inside. You don't have to. No one's going to see that, but it's good practice. So around the edge, and then we're going to zigzag to keep all those layers together. And that gives you a good idea to check to see how much coverage you've got to make sure that you're not have, going to have any holes or gaps in your outside satin stitch. And now we're doing our satin stitch. which is nice and close, but it's not too dense. And then we do a, an outlining running stitch, which is optional. You don't have to do this. You can actually jump that step if you wish. Right, so there is our mesh window. Now we need to bring our zip into the middle of our work and stitch it down, just so we know where that, that puller is. We don't want to be stitching through it. That will not be good for the machine. Get rid of any excess washi tape. Lay the back fabric over so as it's wrong side up. And then put a layer of batting over top of that just to give it some softness. And we're going to do our what I call our sew round, which is the the perimeter tack down. There we go. And then we're going to turn our work over to get rid of those bits of washi tape at the top. Oh, they won't get caught in, but the edge of it might get caught in. I don't like that. Put our back on so as it's right sides together or wrong side up, just put some washi tape in the corners to hold it into position. And then before you go doing your final stitching line, just trim that batting back to the stitching uh, one to two millimetres away from the stitching. Just gives you a better um, line of, of stitching for your foot so you haven't got too much elevation. Looks neater. And then we're going to do our Sew round, which is through all layers, it'll give us our curved corners, but it leaves a gap at the top for our first turn. Then our last row of stitching is a um, triple stitch to sew that seam quite firmly. And again, it's going to be stopping short and leaving a gap at the top for our turn through. Right, let's unhoop this. Remove our pins around the edge. Just 
There's our turn through. And let's trim our seams back to a bare quarter of an inch all the way around. Slip off our corner, quarter of an inch, and then make a step for our turn through, which is half an inch. Come in from our step, quarter of an inch. And there we have it. Let's get rid of our excess and let's turn through. Turn our corners out. So these purses have two turns. So well, the first turn is to get it inside out with the lining all facing out so as we can actually close up our turn through hole. And then our second turn through is through the zip opening. Put those seams in. That's the half inch we left. And we're going to pin that together and we can either stick it together with a craft glue or we can hand sew along the edge of that, which I've done. Just quickly hand sew that, then open that zip up, push those corners out. Use a chopstick or a, or a um, pink thing or a, um, a corner turner. Roll those curves. Give it a light press and voila, we have a mesh front window zipper purse.